I'm sorted here. Okay, go. Okay, welcome back to the channel, everybody. And uh, today I want to talk to you about getting started in bushcraft. Uh, firstly, you don't have to go out and spend loads of money to get started in bushcraft. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna talk about a list of stuff here that you that you should probably carry with you. But at the same time, and, and I want to provide this list. But first, uh, we're gonna we want you to follow this little um, this little line of thought. Okay. First, see what you have at home, okay? And of course, you know, if you have it at home, you know, use it. And you'd be surprised what you could use from home. And I'm going to provide you with a few of these items also. Then, of course, you know, you know, businesses want you to come in and they want you to spend a lot of money on the most expensive knives, the most expensive backpacks, the most expensive boots, okay? And I'm going to try to help you to go into a, a cheaper, less expensive direction, okay? And remember, this is just get started. This is not... You know, this is not uh, you, you know, getting into it, blowing a whole lot of money and um, as an expert, you know, uh, or with all this experience. So this is just getting started. And so what I believe that in the very beginning, when you uh, when you're starting out in anything and bushcraft being what the topic is today, is that, you know, you need to find out if you really like this. You know, some people that go out and they buy tents and backpacks and all this kind of stuff, and then they realize I don't like being in the outdoors. So we want to cut all that out. We'll start off less expensive um, equipment that will that'll be just good enough to get you, not only just get you started, but probably, you know, you can use for a long time. Okay. So once you decided that bushcraft or anything else that you're working, any, any other kind of uh, topic, you know, uh, sports, whatever, is what you want to do, then slowly start investing into uh, uh, updating, updating your gear. Okay. And so, uh, so before you start spending all your money, Let's see how, you know, what, what you need, make your list. And then what we want to do is that, um, um, we want to, to, to make it, I need to stop, stop. Okay. Uh, and next, before you start spending, um, all of your money, learn why and how to use each item of, of equipment, uh, you carry and that you need. It's easier to buy and later upgrade a piece of equipment when you understand better why you need it. And last point, remember, the more you know, the less you have to carry. So let's get started. So what are the most important items to have on you? Okay, well, my first list, and I've already made a video on this, are the 10 essentials. Okay, number one, you need a water bottle or a plastic container, an Avion bottle will work, okay? Or a metal, metal container will work really well because then you can heat the water to boil it over the fire to purify it. Number two, extra clothes for the season, extra socks, underwear, t-shirt, and a sweater. Number three, sun protection. You need sunglasses, a bandana, sun cream, very important to have on you. Number four, a first aid kit, including any medications that you may need. Number five, a flashlight. A headlamp with extra batteries will work also. Number six, trail food. Anything you like that will give you energy and make you happy. Number seven, rain gear. A poncho, rain jacket, rain pants, gaiters, you decide. Number eight, map, compass, notebook, and pencil. Know how to use them. Number nine, a knife. A folder or a fixed blade. I carry both. Number 10, light fire lighting kit. Don't forget you need to know how to light a fire. It's more than just striking a match. And with these 10 items, you're ready to build. You will need the proper clothing for the season to wear. If you're comfortable with shorts, t-shirt, and sandals, then great. Some items may be found in the 10 essentials list, but this is starting out. But I'm going to suggest these items. So what I've had, I have laid out here is basically what you can wear. And, um, some of the things are clothing and some of the things are the tools that you're going to, you can carry with you. First, you know, have a t-shirt that's a synthetic or wool. This is going to ev evaporate the uh, weight. It's going to evaporate the, uh, the, uh, um, the humidity away from your body. Okay. And uh, I also suggest a long shirt, a long sleeve shirt. This just happens to be one. And I got this at a, um, at a, uh, a secondhand store. I paid four bucks for this shirt right here. It's a long sleeve shirt. It's actually from Columbia 
and I paid four bucks, like I said. That, and I have just an old pair of BDU pants that I've had for many years. So those two things are things I just have in my closet that works really well, okay? Then, a sun hat. You can use a baseball cap, or you can use, this is just a surplus uh, boonie hat that I picked up in a shop. I think I paid five bucks for this right here. After that, um, you know, the trousers, when you're wearing trousers, try not to wear cotton trousers. Or if you do wear very lightweight, stay away from denim or jeans because the problem with that is, is that uh, these jean pants, they hold on to humidity really bad, okay? So uh, you, you'll stay, if they get wet, they stay wet. And it, but uh, you can wear shorts, you know, you can wear t-shirt and you can wear a pair of sandals. If that's what makes you happy and you're comfortable in that in, in the outdoors, wear that. But like I said, I suggest some long pants or a pair of shorts. You can get the zip-off pants. Uh, but I don't suggest those because those, those zippers, they, they break. And next thing you know, you got one leg attached, the other leg is unattached. It's, it's not very funny. So I don't suggest that, okay? But go with what you're comfortable in, you know? Wear loose-fitting clothes that are comfortable for you and for the right season, okay? Next, um, don't buy something that you have that you, you know that you are, you may already have at home. Like, you know, like a pair of trainers. You know, um, these are here happen to be a pair of Solomon outdoor shoes right here for hiking and that kind of stuff. These work very very well. Okay, and then of course, under your clothing beside a t-shirt, I'm going to have I've got just a pair of Under Armour underwear. You can go with nothing. Try to avoid cotton. We have expression that cotton kills, so I wear these synthetic and these. These work fantastic, okay? And then socks. These are just a pair of merino socks, not very expensive, uh, merino wool, and they work fantastic. And, you know, a lot of people spend a lot of money on shoes, okay? And the problem is that you spend all this money on shoes, and if you wear cotton socks, next thing you know, you have a hole in your shoes. And this pair actually has a hole in the back of them uh, because I used to wear them to work and with cotton socks. So it's... I've replaced them already, but anyway, wool is much better. You have less, you know, it evacu evacuates the humidity and it, um, it's much more comfortable and it dries much faster and your feet stay, stay warmer because it holds on to a little bit of that warmth, you know, but they're not too warm, okay? So that's the part of the clothing, okay? Um, like I said, when it comes to, to your hat and, uh, you know, for sun gear, a baseball cap will do. The problem with that is I learned very quickly when I went on a Ray Mears course in uh, the UK. I brought a baseball cap like a typical American. I get out there and in the UK it rains every day. So guess what? I stayed wet uh, the entire week I was there on my head because of that. And in the end, I went out and got myself a nice waterproof, more rain resistant, water resistant hat, actually. Um, so there you go. But, you know, anything put on your head will work, you know, just try to do it. Gloves. So I, you know, I carry leather gloves myself, uh, but even a pair of garden gloves will work. These happen to be just a pair of tactical, these are actually mechanics gloves. I've had them for a long time. And the, what, what leather gloves, which I prefer, is that if you're dealing around the fire, you know, you, if you want to grab a pot or grab something, embers, that kind of stuff, the leather glove will protect you much better than a, a cotton, a synthetic glove or a cotton glove. You don't want to wear cotton because, again, it gets wet, it stays wet. And so it's nice to have something because, you know, I also tend to pair, throw a pair of, uh, like, wool liners, just like that in there, so just in case it's cold out or, you know, it's chilly my hands could be a little warmer, okay? So, but if you're handling hot pots and that kind of stuff, it's good to have a pair of leather gloves on you, okay? Um, uh, a leather belt. Okay, I am a leather belt fanatic, a fan, okay? And I only wear leather belts. Um, and so this right here, this is a cheap one right here I got. Doesn't cost very much. It's all leather belt. And uh, you'll find out later on why, as you get, get experience, why a leather belt is much better than a nylon belt. Um, and uh, you'll be happy you made that choice. But on the leather belt, you know, I also add my tools and this kind of stuff. So um, I've got, uh, I've got, this right here happens to be a handsaw, very inexpensive handsaw that I got, okay? Um, and this is from, uh, this is Gerber. I think it's 25 bucks like that um, for a handsaw also. So that's one of the tools that I also carry. Um, so now, now that we know um, what you're wearing, how about what to pack in your backpack? That's coming to you in a minute. So, um, just one thing before we get there. Talking about tools, I, I carry a couple of knives. This is a, an old Swiss Army knife right here from Victoria Knox, and this happens to be a Mora knife. 
This knife, I paid less than 10 bucks for this knife right here. You can get it for under 20. Um, if you looked at my other video of me sharpening, you'll see this video, you'll see this knife I'm actually sharpening and it will definitely, it will shave actually. Um, this is a good knife. It's not a full tang knife. It's a, it's a light blade, but it will get you started. And you'll learn several things with this. You'll learn how to uh, sharpen the knife and you'll learn how to, how to use the knife, how to whittle with it. And uh, you can even split logs with this thing right here with, a, with another piece of something else. But you'll learn, you know, as you learn, then you'll realize, hey, maybe I need something a little better, a little bit. And, and that takes time. You don't have to do that immediately. I know people who use only these knives right here and they're completely happy with them. They even carry a couple of them with them. I don't suggest carrying a whole bunch of stuff, extra stuff with you, carry what you need. Okay. So uh, another, another thing we have with us, I have a handkerchief and this is good for wiping off the sweat. Or, which is pretty warm in here right now, or also uh, covering yourself out of the sun, protecting the back of your neck under your cap or something like that. Uh, this comes in handy. And another thing I carry on me is a compass. I could put my compass in my pocket, I attach it to me, and I have it in my pocket. And this is a little small Silva. You don't have to have, um, you know, the, the, the biggest, best compass in the world that costs 100 bucks in the very beginning when a small compass like this right here will, will work just fine, okay? All right then. So that's that's basically it, and uh, this is what I wear, what I have on me, and uh, don't forget also to carry some money with you. Uh, you never know, and some ID because you never know that too. Because keep it on you, put that inside of a plastic bag. But this is the basic stuff right here uh, to start out. Okay.